Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I want to talk to you about a book that I read recently that is a definite five stars and that is The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing by Mira Jacob. Um, this was actually a proof copy I picked up in a secondhand bookshop. Uh, the front cover actually looks like this and I'll put a copy of the cover up while I'm talking about it now so you can see the, see the, uh, the real life thing. Now if you've been watching this channel you know that I've been partaking in non-fiction November and recently I read Mira Jacobs non-fiction graphic memoir Good Talk and it led on from that that I decided I was going to read her other book that I had on my shelf and um, it tied in nicely because one of my friends was also reading it at the same time and so we decided we were going to buddy read it and it was a really great experience to read it together and to share this amazing story um, if you haven't you know can't tell I really really loved this book so uh, who is this story about well it's told from the point of view of Amina and she is our main narrator she's narrating us through the time uh, the 70s to the 90s um, spanning India to New Mexico to Seattle and um, but really this is more than about just Amina this is a story about her family seen through her eyes this is an unusual one for me really to give five stars because this is 100% a character focused book. There is a minimal plot running through this but it is much more about the characters and their relationships and this family and the wider family and community around them and for me the reason that this ended up being five stars is that it didn't lose its momentum, it didn't feel stuck, um, you didn't feel like the, the points and the characters that were trying to be portrayed were being laboured, it really kept its momentum of the story story moving through and um, the characters were just so um, easy to um, picture and to uh, put yourself into their place. I just thought it was um, expertly written. The story unfolds and it tackles themes like family and expectations of family um, from each other and especially with regards to Indian family this um, obsession with outward appearance and how you appear to everyone else around you and the local community. It also looks at the immigrant experience and this formation of community outside um, your original family and finding people um, with similar values and views in the place that you move to and how important that becomes to you and how much of a family they become, whether they're blood relations or not. In the story, Amina becomes a photographer and moves to Seattle from her family's home in New Mexico and she becomes obsessed with the uglier side um, of what should be um, family, fun, um, joyous events. She takes photos of the father of the bride having a tryst with a bridesmaid. She captures a bridesmaid puking. She even manages to capture someone jumping off a bridge and committing suicide. And this obsession with death I think stems from things that we learn from earlier in the book which I won't talk about because I don't want to spoil um, but Amina's life is touched throughout her um, different formative years with death of some sort of somebody in her family and I think that's really important and has become important and shaped her life and caused her to become um, quite obsessed with this idea of death and um, the uglier side of life. Probably the most fascinating for me is actually Amina's mother and father. There is a bitterness um, from the mother of them not moving back to India as her, the father had sort of promised when they moved over for his education. There's the shame that she feels from them not doing that and the fact that she misses her family. There's also this unwillingness to try and assimilate into the new area. She is continually cooking food um, that she knows and that she loves. She doesn't want to try anything new even at Thomas's request and um, I find that very interesting this resistance this sort of bitterness between the two of them and yet when the chips are down when things are going badly there is a definite bond and unity between the two and so there is a lot of love there but there's also this um, push and pull with each other towards various different things in their life which I think can be quite um, a common experience in marriage and perhaps certainly in um, an Indian marriage I don't know um, you know I'm 
not Indian, but I get this idea of this quite volatile relationship between these two and then um, the sort of fireworks, but when push comes to shove, they're a unit and they come together and there's much love there. Something I also found quite fascinating was um, this look at the brain. Thomas is a neurosurgeon and um, the brain becomes um, a big theme in this. There is um, sleepwalking that we discover from one of the family members. We also discover that one of the family members has narcolepsy. We also um, discover that um, later on there is brain tumours and this idea of brain and memory and thought is something that continually goes through, um, through the story um, and I really enjoyed that look into the brain and our idea of memory and what we remember and what we want to remember and the brain playing tricks on us and um, how regrets can really affect and shape um, our lives and um, yeah, I just found that really um, fascinating, uh, this theme that was interwoven all the way through. In this, Amina has um, a really strong bond with her cousin Dimple, but they couldn't be more different. They're both living in Seattle, both working in some ways in creative fields. Amina is a photographer, she's working as a photographer for weddings and events, and Dimple runs an art gallery. And it's interesting how different they can be. Um, Dimple does not really have any relationship or um, communication with her family, pushing against this sort of Indian idea of marriage and arranged marriage and um, family life and ex expectations, rather being sort of separate than um, sort of embracing it or even sort of taking it on board and um, or pretending to. She'd rather separate herself from the family. And yet Amina has this um, real draw and um, feeling of um, responsibility towards her family and family life and it's really interesting to see um, these different sides of this experience. The story often shows quite a lot of parallels with Good Talk which is a non-fiction memoir of Mira Jacobs uh, real life and there's definitely some autobiographical elements in this. Uh, I think the bits that you read if you read Good Talk either before or after you will notice a lot of parallels with Mira's real life and I think maybe that is why she has done such an amazing job of being able to bring these characters to life because for her, her they are um, possibly and I would suggest definitely but um, I may stand corrected based on people in her real life um, and I think that shows they're so um, well crafted well rounded she's I mean you know even if they are based on people in real life she's really managed to capture um, personalities of characters and uh, p people that you can imagine meeting in real life. If you cannot tell, I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's just a story about um, Amina's life, what's happened in India, the fractured relationship with the family, then that leads to sort of a tragedy, and then this American experience growing up in the sort of 80s, um, the tragedy that befalls the family um, during that time, and then the present in the 90s where Amina is is now drawn back again to her home and tragedy is going to strike and how is the family going to deal with that, what are the expectations, how have things developed over the years before that and oh it's just so good, I really enjoyed it and it's really made me want to root out more books like this. I really enjoyed this softer story with um, more character driven um, and yet and may, perhaps um, I find it more engaging and interesting and keeping my attention because it is an experience outside of my own um, and I'll definitely be looking for more books like that because um, it seems to be something that I really enjoy. Anyway, if you cannot gather, I fully, fully, fully recommend this book. I gave it a full whopping five stars and I know that the person I read it with also really enjoyed it and I've heard many other people really enjoyed it recently. In fact, it was a push from Kendra Winchester's channel, um, who I will link down below. She really pushed me over the edge. I'd just read Good Talk. I watched her video where she talked about it, and I was like, yes, now is the time to pick that one up, and, uh, and I'm so pleased that I did. So anyway, that's it from me, <laughs> and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye for now, BookTube.